on today's show. The mad scientist himself, Jeffrey Rosenzweig, joins us to talk everything and anything about tire changes. He's got 10 tires underneath his belt, folks. That's right. He's changed every single tire you could possibly think of. We'll get into the Burris. We'll get into the Hoosier. We'll do the Slick. We'll do the, tr the Treaded. I got everything under the sun. We've got also big thing to give away today, $140 value of super stretchy denim jeans you can ride and then also go get a beer afterwards thanks to Boulder Denim Jeans. And, of course, we'll give lunch to two people today. I'm doing that just because we feel like it. It's all right here, so strap it on, folks. Get yourselves ready for another big show. It's Luch Dog in the morning, and this is the voice of one wheel. Welcome back, folks. It is Luch Dog in the morning with the voice of one wheel, and I am so pumped to be joined today by our guest for the show, Jeffrey Rosenzweig. What's up, dude? How you feeling? What's up, Luch Dog? Oh, uh, man, it's early morning. out there, and I believe Sacramento? Is that where you're at in California? Yeah, Sacramento. Thank you for joining us this early. We've got a lot to get to, of course. We've got the Magic Robots call in line, so the number for that is 571-354-7338. Feel free to hit us up on the social media lounge, too. We don't mind texts. We love you chatting on our chat in YouTube. So that's over at 2TR Studios, and you guys already know that because you're watching live. So thank you to all your live listeners for joining us early. This is a big one. Jeff, how fast can you change a tire, in your opinion? Oh, <laughs> uh, I've never actually raced i try to do it really quickly i just take my time uh there's no rush but 15 minutes was the last one i did th this last get Saturday. the hell out of here 15 minutes belly we should put him on the clock belly matt labelle everybody hello yeah. sir hey how's it going do you think 15 minutes over under we put you on the clock you could yeah. do it yeah start to finish taking the screws off pulling the wheel off everything from the beginning yeah God bless america so i got a whole bunch to get to and guys i want this today is really going to be about tires and then we've also got um that's for about the first half of the show and then caleb is going to be joining us to tell us his inspiring story of how he rides a one wheel, um, being paralyzed from the knees down. I don't know how he does it. I can't wait to talk to him. He's out on a trail floating and charging up so that he's ready for a phone call later. But Jeff has got all of the answers right now for your tire questions. So feel free to pepper us with your phone calls, 571-354-7338 or texts. That works too. You can also chat. Belly is always monitoring the social media lounge on YouTube. Dude, I'm, I'm at a thousand miles. And thank you quick for everybody for helping me yesterday diagnose my problem. I had posted that my board wasn't connecting Bluetooth. Shocker. All I had to do was turn my phone off and on again. <laughs> Seriously, that's the problem. Like, we figured it out how to put it into programming mode, change the modes manually. And then I'm like, man, Belly and I are sitting here, like, beating our heads together. Like, why is this not working? The, the board isn't sending out Bluetooth. And somebody posted a GIF. Thank you, whoever it was. Very sarcastic, but absolutely helped. I think it was uh, Dustin Foster. That's funny. Did you turn it off and on again? My, talking about my phone. AKA his phone. <laughs> and that, that was all that it took. But, dude, I've heard a couple people having some issues this week, so maybe they're doing something with the firmware. I don't know. Jeff, what's your favorite tire? We want to talk to you. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. My board works. Um, what is your favorite tire to use right now? Like, What are you running? Uh, so my favorite tire, uh, personally, right now is the uh, Burris 5.5 uh, in the TX33 compound. So is it right to say that that anything over 5.5, we're gonna have to shave off some of uh, some of the wheel so that it doesn't rub? No, no, definitely that's not true. Um, you can't really just go by the numbers because a lot of times the uh, tire manufacturers give you numbers, but they're rounded pretty heavily and sometimes absolutely wrong. So you can't just yeah, we can't just blank it. Okay, so that's not a fair rule that under six will fit or over six is too heavy. You just kind of have to. Yeah. How would I know? How do I know the difference? What do I do? Try yeah, it? Some, you need somebody to try it. We yeah, need you. Definitely. We need yeah, you, you need sir. Somebody. <laughs> so, all right, well, then let's do this. Um, when I need to change my tire, I'm coming up with 1,000 miles, okay? Um, what What's the – do I – What? Are, there is some terminology. I don't understand. Belly, do you know what the bead is in a tire, breaking yes. the bead? Oh. Tire spoons. You know what a tire spoon is? That I don't know. See, we need you, man. So first of all, I've heard <laughs> breaking the bead. I've heard about tire spoons. Can you just walk us through front to back what it would take for a noob like myself to just change a tire when I've never done it before? 
Yes, I mean, you have options. I'm going to be completely honest. If you don't have the right tools, it's going to be a harder job. Now, some people out there are talented. I mean, if you've seen John Rambo or somebody like that, they can break the beads with their bare hand. I've done it, but it's not a consistent thing because every tire behaves a little differently. And so even the same, you know, a Vega might be easy one time, and the next time it's so difficult to do. And there's so many reasons to it. But, uh, you know, this is the bead of the tire right here, if you look in the... So the inner lining, basically? That inner yeah, the, lining, yeah, really? The, yeah, the part that connects to the rim that sits on the rim, that's the uh, that's the bead. Why does and that matter? trying to... Um, well, because that's the part that's stuck onto the rim good. You know, you inflate it, it gets stuck into the grooves of the rim. And this is the part when it's, it's hard to basically break off. With your bare hands, it's really hard. I mean, imagine riding and taking a turn and the thing is coming off easily. Oh, God. It doesn't. It's, it's tough. Yeah. So you have to actually um, be able to break this bead, pull it off of the rim. So let me ask you this question then. Is there something yeah. like an adhesive that sets it or is it just no? once you fill it up that it's set on around the, uh, the hub? Now it's just going to be – so when you say breaking the bead, you just mean breaking that pressure between the tire and the hub to get it off. Yeah, the connection, the grip between the – Right, but it's, I mean, not it's, like, it's, it's not like – it's, like, it's not like breaking a – it's not like glued together or anything that you have to break. No, 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 absolutely no. not. No. That was my first impression, no, Belly. No, dude. Otherwise, you'd have to change your rim every time. Well, I didn't know about people breaking beads. I'm like, Jesus Christ. It's weird. It works similar to a car tire. From yeah, never done that either. But I, there, has to, there has to be people out there like me, and that's what I said to Jeff because he's like, we're doing the pre-show meeting yesterday, and he's like – yeah, but everybody knows that. And I'm like, no, you've already said half of the shit I don't understand. Like, what kind of comp? What are you talking about? A TRX compound? I don't even know what you said. Yeah, so different manufacturers um, have different hardness. They call it durometer. Um, just like uh, tires in general just have that uh, that attribute. And so some are softer or harder than others. Some, okay. You know, they have a test where they drop pins on it and stuff like that and to see how soft or hard the tire is. But yeah, in general, uh, for most manufacturers, the higher the number is, the harder the tire is. The lower the number, the softer the tire. So what would you prefer? Do you like it higher or lower? Oh, uh, gosh. There's a big debate going on. Um, you know, I, I'm going to say this up front. A lot of this stuff is more than 85% personal preference on tires. So, But um, personally, I like it right in the middle. <laughs> well, because um, you probably ride a lot of stuff. I see your videos. You're, you're a very versatile rider. It's not like you do one thing. Uh, I, I would guess that's the reason. Is that is that close? Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. If, um, you know, softer tires, if you're riding off road, well, so I'm a little bit older, my knees kind of ache here and there, uh, they get tired faster. So, uh, I do like softer tires because a lot of them seem to take uh, bumps much better. Like when you're going over uh, rocks and stuff like that, the tire will actually kind of uh, compress and decompress like that for you. It sure. absorbs a lot of the shock. Um, harder tire, it kind of transfers a lot of that vibration into your knees and stuff. So yeah, yeah. It depends what kind of terrain you're riding. How funny Big is deal. this, Belly? So he he perfectly just Jeff. Thank you. That's exactly what we needed because I we have to tease this a little bit at the end of today's show. Belly and I have put together something for you. Look, obviously this show is about one wheels and our love and our passion for it, and we really just want to pair that with putting a smile on your face. That's been the <laughs> whole thing about TTR Studios. Whether it's Luch Dog in the morning, any of the music I write, it's always been about can we leave you with a smile on your face? So that's why we do some of the silly antics that we do here. So, Belly and I have written a parody song. I'm all for antics. I am, too. I think it's a great thing, but some people really just want the information and are saying, why are you not letting Jeff talk this whole time right now? Shut the hell up, Adam. And I get a lot of that. We want to leave you with a smile on your face. And one of the we did a parody song that we will sing for you, Belly and I. We'll sing to you at the end of this show. And it's about tire pressure. And <laughs> one of the lines is, drop it down to 15, keep it easy on the knees. Oh. Because that's why I dude, I ride really true. low, man, because I I have knee problems too. I had an ACL um and the other one's about to go, you can tell. I mean, I can just feel it. Bob Kearns, shout out, hope you're feeling better. Um same thing, Andrea, hope you're feeling better. But dude, I mean, those softer tires make me feel way more floaty and 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 it, you're right, it absorbs all those bumps, it makes my knees feel better. Yeah, kills your mileage though. <laughs> Goddamn right it does. That in delirium, you're getting about three and a half miles. So um, what yeah. is it between the different tires? Because I ride a Vega. I'm still on my stock Vega, and I love grass. Um, I ride pavement too, but I'd love the grass if I could. I'd always do that. Why would I want to? Uh, dude, is it is it weird that I'm like, everybody seems to like this this Hoosier and the Burris and the flat <laughs> and the slick and the threaded or, or treaded or whatever the hell? I love my Vega. I'm afraid of like switching over to the Andromeda upgrade and getting a different board. Once I change over my tire, it's going to feel different and I don't want to ride it anymore. Is the Vega the worst one by far? No, absolutely not. The Vega is actually a, a great tire. Like, uh, you know, what's funny is 
you know, a lot of times you get your product that you really enjoy having and you want new mods on it. You want your board to be different. You put all these things on, you're like, and somehow just immediately in your mind, you already think, oh, this is the greatest thing ever because it's new. It's new. It gives you a new experience. But, you know, after going back and forth between different tires and Vegas, every time I go back to the Vega, I'm like, man, that Vega is pretty good. <laughs> I love it, <laughs> it's a man. Good tire. I've never tried anything else, but my God, what's the difference? So if I went to a Hoosier, everybody says it's more rounded, right? Yeah, it definitely is. The profile is more round, yeah. So would that be so, easier for things like 160, or 180s and 360s, stuff like that? A, a little bit. Um, it depends on how you – you know what's funny is there's different ways to do 180s and 360s. So, like, everybody has their own technique. Like, I do mine a certain way. Jeff McCosker and Bodie Harris and all those guys do theirs a certain well, way. Well, tell us um, about it. How do you do yours? Yeah, so for me, um, I don't do it a lot anymore, but when I was, um, you know, practicing it, trying to get it good, um, I did it more on the Vega, and my trick was – you just practice um, finding the edge of the Vega. Yep. Just like, you know, just lean on it like and try to do a sharp turn, but not really try to do a 180. But you'll feel there's a certain point there where the you're, you get on the edge of the Vega, that corner, and it breaks free from the concrete yes. or even any, you know, on the... So actually, it's different between concrete and grass, by the way. Uh, but on concrete and pavement, when you get on the edge, um, it'll kind of break free and spin on its own. And that's the point where you want to like make it twist because let your you want to do it quickly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Let your shoulders yeah. have your shoulders wound. And if you get onto that Look, point where he's talking about, where you just lean onto the toe edge or your heel edge, whichever you're more comfortable with, yeah. as soon as you get that surface level down to a minimum, Oh man, just let your, let your, um, let your shoulders go and it'll all just kind of happen naturally. Your feet should go last. Remember that your feet should go last. They'll happen because of everything else you did at the top of your body. You don't really need to jam your feet around. But I did think about that. Would the Hoosier be easier since it's a little bit more rounded? Yeah, you know, uh, for me, because of the way I do it, um, I mean, I'm able to, but it's a, it, it's a little bit different than technique-wise. Uh, I think the way um, McCosker and Bodie and those guys do it is probably better than the way I do it. Um, they stay pretty flat on their tire, actually. Um, they're able to do it that way. I was never able to succeed. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a little bit less grip on, uh, you know, on some of these rounder tires, um, it doesn't mean that they don't have any grip. I mean, they grip well. They don't slide or anything. But, uh, yeah, it just – it depends. You know? So but, what um, would be – if I had to say, like, the Vega is best for this, the Hoosier is best for this, do you have an answer for that? Like, do you have an, uh, an opinion? I wish I could. You know, that's the funny thing is um, you constantly see, see people saying, oh, what's the best tire? Tell me. There is no best tire. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's so much personal preference. Like, you know, I ride with McCosker, so he absolutely loves the uh, 6.0 Slick from Hoosier, and he sees no other reason to get any other tire. Like, he thinks that's absolutely the best. Uh, for me, I like it. I think it's uh, very close to my Burris, but I like my treaded tire. Um, I've had too many problems on grass, for instance, on, like, sliding or even hitting, like, a little pothole, and if I'm not going at speed, it kind of just spins out the tire. Sure. And I, I, I didn't, you know, so... Personally, I, I like the the tread, um, but I love this the, the the smooth sound on the pavement of, and the feel of a slick tire. But for me, it's the Burris. Uh, for McCosker, it's the uh, 6.0 Hoosier, and I can't tell you anybody what they're gonna like personally. They just have to try it. Well, it all depends or on the kind somebody. of stuff you like. I mean, if you're really riding around mainly on pavement, what's the point of getting a treaded tire? I don't see a point of it. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Uh, yeah, on pavement you're gonna get better grip usually, um, unless you're riding on wet pavement a lot. But even then, I it, it I haven't noticed a big difference between the treaded and the the slicks for what we do. Gotcha. Let's give away something yeah. for free. I want to give away some some lunch to somebody who's li listening live because here's the thing. Um, first of all, Jeffrey, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your knowledge. I could do this for days. So hopefully we're gonna get as much info out of you as possible. But I did want to kind of break it up a little bit because even like my favorite class. In college, even when we're talking about something that I know a lot of people care about, like tires, I think if we do it all to, at one time, it'll probably uh, like leave you with that glazed over feeling like, oh, God, at the end of it. So we wanted to kind of pepper in some antics. Let's give away a lunch for free right now, $10, PayPal to your account, straight out of our money. This is not out of the Float Life Fund money. When you guys, you know, I worry about people getting honest about sponsorships and, the, you know, accepting that and accepting prizes. It's obviously rubbed some people the wrong way that we give away, um, that we're giving away denim jeans on a one wheel podcast i didn't i i guess i get it you don't want us to just be all about the money we're not it's 25 dollars a show for a sponsorship with us folks it's not like we're rolling in the green over here and then i take that money and i buy you guys lunch with it that's the money that i use to buy lunch for you guys so i don't want you to think we're selling out over here it's just i want to continue to do cool things and if a sponsor or somebody random just hits me up and is a listener and says hey i own this company i feel like this would be something cool to give away i'm always gonna say yes so i hope that doesn't rub people the wrong way but I definitely feel like this is something you could ride in. These jeans are supposed to be like super stretchy. 
Um, and I'm excited to give them away. But but not only to the donators. We don't only just give away things to the donators. It's all about the live listeners, too. So if you call us right now, 571-354-7338, first caller to get through, we will PayPal you $10 for lunch today. Good luck to you. Do we have a call coming in already? That's all. The, part- the participation in this show, Jeffrey, I mean, just <laughs> Amazing, fantastic. Yeah. You've called in a couple times. Oh, yeah. Once or twice, yeah. Yeah. We definitely the appreciate it. The community is amazing it. in general, yeah. Well, the community has been great. We've got somebody on the line. Congrats, hello, you are a winner. And what is, uh, let's see, who are you, where are you from? Hi, it's Mandy calling from Boston. Amanda Thompson calling from Boston. How about that? Mandy, you got a lot of people trying to kick you off the line. I can see a whole bunch of other uh, calls coming in right now. What are you up to this morning? You're getting crushed in snow, aren't you? Uh, yeah, just a little snow. Just a little. I, I I heard you guys got like 18 inches up there. Yeah, it's still coming. Um, yeah, I can't really see out the windows right now, so I won't be one wheeling for a while. Well, at least you'll be ordering a pizza on us from TTR Studios. That's ten dollars coming your way, my friend. What are you gonna? What are you gonna? What are you gonna Thank get with you. it? What's gonna be for lunch today? Oh, boy, what are we having for lunch, Nikki? My roommate Nikki is watching with me. Oh, uh, what's up, Nikki? All right, well, I can't do 10, but you guys can get lunch for 5 and 5. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, please. I, I wasn't – I actually – I'm not even calling for the free lunch. I'm calling because uh, I was on last week, and I had a problem with my board, and uh, I wanted to update the folks Oh. Wow. that uh, when I got home and reassembled my board using a milk crate to keep it nice and even – we got the tire on straight. It is working. Thank you to everyone who uh, who had pro tips for me. Um, I, I just, you know, thought there might be some folks invested in that story. Yeah, no, Mandy. So what you did, because Jeff, what happened was she we tried to reassemble her wheel, and we didn't. We just did it like while it was sitting on the ground normally, and it totally was not aligned correctly, and it was giving her this like <clears throat> feeling. What's up, Jeff? Oh no, 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 it's fine. Right? Uh, yeah, I mean, you just gotta make sure it's lined up and tightened well. Yeah. We'll see, and that's what we didn't sure. know, I, dude. We needed you, so she ended up putting it on a milk crate, and mm-hmm. uh, and Mandy, that worked out for you, right? It got it nice and level. Yeah, in fact, I'd say it's even riding better than before. Um, as, as we were discussing on the show, I usually ride a mission. I don't, I don't really do delirium. I don't even have it. Um, now I feel like I'm riding in delirium having tried it on Adam's board. Like awesome. my board feels as good as his. Yeah. Eating up crack. Uh, what did we say? Eating up stumps for snacks. Cracks for snacks. Cracks for snacks. <laughs> 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 All right, Mandy, we'll say hi to Nikki for us. Are you basically paying it forward and passing the $10 on to the next caller? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. You know what? I, you no, really. Uh, like we bought tons of groceries. We have our bread and milk. We're good. All so, right. Please um, go ahead and go ahead and give the lunch to the next caller. That's fine. Amanda Thompson, thank you for your participation. Go ahead and hang up on her. We appreciate you, Mandy. We'll see you soon. All right, passing it forward. The next call because we just had like five come in at the same time. Next call. Go ahead. Five seven one three five four seven three three eight, and we will give you ten dollars for lunch. You can try again. This is your second shot, Jeff. I'm sorry. I don't mean for this for this to be taken so long, but people want lunch, man. I'll give them lunch, man. Give them what they want. Well, while we're waiting on a phone call, what uh, what do you do to keep the board aligned when you're changing a tire and stuff like that? You know, I don't really have any tricks. I haven't had any problem. I, I actually uh, have the board upside down, and I pull a tire out from the bottom. Um, when I put it back on, I put it exactly the same way I take it out. <laughs> well, so, okay, so but can you talk to us yeah. about that? I'd love to hear how to get the tire off. Do you use yeah, a spoon? So that, I mean, how do you have a certain way? How do we do it? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, so you you know you open up the compartment where all the uh, wires connect to the controller, R- remove all those, uh, disconnect all the not not all the wires actually. It's only uh all the wires except for the foot pad uh, wire. You don't need to disconnect that one. And then you go and there's uh clips that hold the the the, the cables along the side of the rail, the inside of the rail, so it doesn't come on and touch the tire and you know just dangle out there. So there's clips holding it in. Um, there's three of them. You just just use a screwdriver, a Phillips Phillips head screwdriver. Remove those. Pop the clips off. And then once you've done that, now you're ready to take the main bolts off. And those are the four bolts on the rails that hold the, t- the rim on. Yep. Um, you do that, and then it's pretty much ready to come off, and you start lifting it. Now, you might have a little resistance because the ca- uh, the power cable has like a big, um, I don't know, it's like a big rubber piece on it, like a tension, uh, some- something for tension, I think. I'm not sure exactly what that does. But um, that-, that piece clips onto the rail a little bit, makes it a little bit hard. But just look, look-, look for it, and you can pop- just move it and just make it easier for you to you know, come out. But it- you're pretty much done. That's all it is. Fantastic caller. Congratulations. Who are you? Where are you from? 
Thank you. I can tell you you guys. Who is this? Carlos. Carlos. Carlos, congratulations, okay. man. No. <laughs> belly, no, the, that's so this is how Belly rolls. If you don't come correct with this, he's gonna hang up on you. He's just straight up gonna hang up on you. So uh it was Carlos Gonzalez. If he wants to call in for lunch, but man, your feedback is ridiculous. Sounds like you're driving with your in a car with your window down. Yeah, so Belly said, No, sir, feel free for, to call uh, back. For radio purposes, always uh <laughs> roll up your windows and, and turn uh, off the stream for a second, please. You can't be watching along with the stream on delay. Jeffrey, how do you get the tire? Once you get the hub off, feel free. We still got free lunch. Go ahead and call in whenever you want. We're going to take a break here in just a second. In fact, now would be a great time to do that. Let's go ahead and take a break. And when we get back, I'd like to have Jeff tell us how to get the tire actually off the hub. Because that sounds like a, a freaking pain in the ass. So get your calls in right now. First one to call during the break, 571-354-7338. We will buy you lunch and get you on the air next. This is Luch Dog in the morning, and you're listening to The Voice of One Week. to delight your senses. Whether you're craving the Chipotle pulled pork sliders, honey basil chicken tacos, or the infamous kitchen sink wrap, Marinate has something for everybody with tons of vegetarian options too. It's the perfect choice of catering for your offices or events with fast and friendly service from a brand new store on Melrose and Western. Stop by today or you can order online at marinateyourlife.com. Cooked to perfection at Marinate Restaurant. MarinateYourLife.com. What's up, y'all? It's Maddie Mads here. This show is sponsored by TTR Studios. Whether it's weddings, parties, karaoke, audio, video production, and all your entertainment needs, call TTR Studios LLC at 703 850 2223 or check them out at TTREvents.com. Start the show, Looch. Back, folks. It is Luch Dog in the morning. God bless America. We got a lot going on here. Carlos is on the line, and he has won himself a free lunch. Carlos, what's up, dude? What's up, guys? What's going on? Love the show, guys. Hey, so glad you got in here. We uh, we had to make sure we could hear you. Where are you calling from, man? I'm calling from Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to go, Detroit. All go right, Lions. Go Lions. Yeah, Belly's a huge Lions fan. <laughs> so good on you. Go Red Wings. <laughs> yeah, Red Wings. Hey, man, how long you been riding a one wheel? I actually haven't rode one. I got my XR on order, and uh, I'm waiting on that. But I've been really into, you know, reading the forums and you guys, and I'm so stoked. Awesome. I can't wait. All right, that just makes me even happier to give him $10 right now. So, Carlos, will you do me a favor? Just text this number. Um, Actually, I got your phone number. I'll call you after the show. We'll get you all set up with 10 bucks. And thanks for listening, man. Spread that stoke. Yeah. I can't wait for you to get that XR, dude. What are you most looking forward to? Just riding it, man. I mean, my date is April 18th when I'm supposed to get it. I'm so stoked. I mean, you guys don't understand. And no, no, we do watching understand. your guys' videos, I mean, you guys, you guys break it down. And that's awesome that 
this community is just growing and, you know, people making like all the aftermarket parts and everything is so awesome. And I can't wait to ride it. And I'm just so stoked. All right. Call awesome. of the day right there on the Magic Robots call in line because a phone call without robots is just a can on a string. Dude, thank you, Carlos. You are the best, man. Have fun with your one wheel. We'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Oh, boy, Jeff, we got to get into this, man. How cool was that? That was nice to hear. Yeah, it's really cool. Dude, how do you We're get the tire bro. off of the middle? What do you call it? How do you break the bead? How do you get it all set up? Do you use a, a tire spoon? How do I do this? Okay, so, yeah, I mean, the first step, I don't have a – I wish I brought a tire with me. But the first step uh, I usually do is after I pull the wheel off of the uh, the rails and everything, I take off – inside of the uh, – there's a core inside the uh, the valve, the valve, valve stem core. I, I pull that out, and you don't even have to deflate the tire. You just stick in a tool. Um, you can buy these. This is what I use. They, they're like $2 at Walmart. or Sorry, I shouldn't advertise Walmart, but, you know, um, what $2 is that? at Walmart. Can you explain that for the radio listeners? Because I know we have a lot of podcasters who can't see. Maybe you, can you just describe what you're holding? Yeah, it's a little tool. And actually, if you buy um, slime, it comes with it as well on the top, just to let you know. Um, there's a oh. little piece up on the top there. But it's, it's it's a little tool that goes into the vault core, and you just twist it counterclockwise, and little by little, and then eventually you'll hear the air coming out, and then poof, Now, I'm, I'm, am I the only one who's wondering what he's talking about with the vault core? I don't even know what that is. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, that's the part where you pump the air in. Oh, you're yeah, talking about so the, the actual, like the, the tire, okay, the tire pressure, uh, yeah, the valve. Yeah, yeah, where, mm. yeah, where you push, pump the air in. That's but you, there's, Inside there is a little pin that you want to pull out the core. And you, so you stick this in there and you can twist it out, yeah. Oh, oh all right, well, how about go. that? And then you said on top of the slime, when you held it up, it wasn't in front, can you hold it in front of your face so we can see it? Or you remember you're a tight window yeah, yeah. there. Um, yeah. Even more in front of your face, right there. What is that oh. green slime? And when people talk about it, what is that for? Why do we need it? Yeah, so it coats the inside of your tire, the lining of your tire, and basically... Um, you that's know, good. if it has a hole that's small enough for it to plug it, it will do that for you. So, you know, you don't get stuck out there in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but it'll plug pretty big holes. I mean, even like uh, pretty much up to – even uh, – I, I don't know about nail size holes, like big nails, but small nails, it'll, it'll plug those holes pretty well. That's perfect. Thank you for putting that in. And we, you can put that away. In. But I'm, I'm curious, like, you, how do you insert it? Do you, do you insert it into, like, where you put the air pressure in? Yes, absolutely. That's and that's why you have to remove the valve core because once you remove that, now there's a big, uh, you know, a channel or a hole there for the uh, slime to go in. Okay, so you're not just taking off the little cap like if you were at your car and you're just gonna fill your car tires with air. You have to pull that actual whole thing out. Yeah, the core and the inside. It's not. It's a little tiny thing. Right. Um, when you actually when you buy caps, some some of them will actually come with four different core four cores. Oh no them, kidding. You know. But then that yeah. then that will allow, you don't want to just unscrew the cap and then start jamming the green goo down the air pressure valve. That's not going to happen. No, you got to let the air out. You got to let the air out. You got to get the valve out and then put the thing in. Is I'm, am I hearing yes. that correctly? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. That's you correct. Go. Then yeah. you got to put the slime in. And then the slime lives inside your tires. And if you get a hole, uh, then it'll kind of plug yeah. it. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. Does it plug it long term or is it like like it's just like a 50 mile like fix until you get a new tire? Um, it seems to plug it pretty long term. I mean, I think I've ridden mine hundreds of miles and a lot of people have. A lot of people don't realize that their slime is working until they go to replace their tires. And then they look at it and they see all these like little shiny spots or green spots on their tire. That's because the slime plugged the holes for them. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I've uh, had a few. I dropped a few questions in on the social media lounge, like what kind of tires everyone's using. Uh, I've got a lot of Vega uh, responses. Also, uh, One Wheel Dot Pro is using the five and a half Hoosier treaded. Oh wow! So we've got a good variety of choices here mm -hmm. that people are using. What about the Burris? Talk to us about the Burris because that doesn't get a lot of love. But I mean, does that get up there and rate? No, it doesn't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Everybody that I've let try it or everybody that's bought one has been happy with it. Um, you know, it, it doesn't get a lot of love because, uh, you know, we kind of follow what the first person did. So, you know, a lot of the first people that were changing tires went straight to the, the, the Hoosier. Sure. And they started using that. And, and it's a great tire. I mean, and actually the, the, the manufacturers are great, too. They, they give some quality products. Um, so that's, that's what's going on there. It's just people are just, you know, following those that went before them. That's all. Um, Hoosiers, um, I mean, Burst has been getting a little more traction lately, you know, amongst the users but how much riders. do these tires cost jeff oh man the cost uh depends if you buy them on ebay you might get a good deal but if you buy them brand new you can get, depending on what the tire is anywhere from 50 bucks to 90 dollars yeah. so less than 100 dollars for a brand new tire why would i spend yeah. like 20 bucks on ebay for a used tire is there a reason i mean other than saving 50 uh, bucks yeah, yeah. So uh, used tires usually they're gonna come off of a go kart. That's been, you know, uh, those guys. They they want, after one or two sessions they'll just change their tire. Um, they don't they don't keep them very long. So, 
there. So, so if you're looking to save a couple bucks, that's actually not a bad thing because they're, they're. I mean, you're not talking yeah. like they're doing a thousand miles and then selling them. Yeah, and they ride different. Like they don't ride on the edges and stuff. So they, uh, yeah, they're actually. I don't know. I mean, I have one used one and I have no problem with it. Well, I'm yeah. starting to realize, Bell, you got something over there. You got those eyes. Bell's got no. those eyes. Uh, I just see Helico posting in. He's riding a six and a half Hoosier treaded beast mod. Uh, yeah, for nice. sure. Nice, for sure. And he oh. tried to use the Rosenwig uh, noggin, sl- uh, but it's too slick for him. The what? Rosenwig. Rosenzweig? Uh, noggin 6.0. What's the Rosenzweig noggin? <laughs> yes. uh, probably because I'm bald. I'm <laughs> slick. <laughs> it's all right. We've got we've got the bald community here. Uh, bald community here. No. Adam's in on it. No, I am, and it's funny. Je- uh, Jeff, tell him what you said in pre-show. It's perfect. It just came up organically. That's great. Oh man, no, I, I was just saying. You know what? I'm not gonna wear a hat for this episode. I'm gonna just you know. I don't know. Because I'm everybody wears knees. hats. Yeah, everybody. You know what? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yes, the Do brotherhood. <laughs> we're so Belly, too. Belly woke up like <laughs> 10 minutes before the show. Are you ready for this song that we're about to sing to the people in front? I mean, thousands of people are going to see we this. We still got another thing to I do. I know. We still got cable, but I'm just, uh, Cab- uh, Caleb, but I'm just wondering your nerves right now to sing for about 1,000 people. I'm always ready. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. What is it yeah. like riding around in Flotopia? Because I know you've had a chance to ride with McCosker out there. And I would like a scale of 1 to 10. How impressed are you? 10 being this is absolutely amazing. With, with the park itself? With Flotopia as a park. Because I'm creating my own out here called Float Field, and I think it rivals. <laughs> I would give it a – oh, man, I'm going to get in trouble for this. He's going to get mad at should you. Should I be honest here or should I give him some points? Uh, I would give it a seven. <laughs> Average answer. Now, why, what do you like about it? What's been fun? I mean, I worry about like grass and killing the grass in my area. I guess the way that they have it set up out there, it's kind of already set. Like, it's kind of more dirt than like nice grass. I would imagine. Yeah, you know, it's the back of uh, someone's yard, and uh, yeah, the the ground is definitely not smooth. It's, it's bumpy, um, and you know, to get up some of those ramps, especially for me, I'm a heavier guy. I need some speed, and I, I have a hard time getting enough speed there. I saw time. your time trials. You were moving pretty quick with a beer in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, that was Jeff with the, uh, Makoska with the beer in his hand. Oh, you didn't um, have the but, beer? Okay, you were next. That's right. I just oh, remember I wish somebody I was had that one. fast. Yeah, no, no. I'm actually slow. I'm not that, that fast of a rider, actually. Yeah. But there are some really cool features. If anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, Makoska's got a nice little setup up there in Sacramento. I know Jeff rides with him all the time, so I figured I'd bring it up. It's called they call it Floatopia. Bunch of basically, it's like all the features from Float Life Fest last year just jammed into a backyard. <laughs> and, and some new ones, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, we're pumped. I love the edits that they put out. So that's awesome. Um, what else? I mean, is there anything that you have, you, you know, here's what I'd like to ask you. I have noticed that my toe side, I guess I ride heel side heavy because my heel side of the tire is starting to get a little more worn than my toe side. Um, I, I, what would, would you prefer me riding around? Okay. So put it this way. I, I put my right, I ride regular, right? So I put my right foot on the back and my left foot in front, but to switch this up, I have two choices. I can either ride a whole lot more toe side only, or I could turn around and put my left side on the back and put my right side and kind of ride it goofy and keep riding heel side. What would you do in this situation? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I do both of those things, but um, telling yourself to ride more toe side is probably not going to happen. You just naturally <laughs> ride a certain way. <laughs> it just feels Everybody better. Does. It feels better. Sorry, Mandy. No, no, no. Mandy likes heel side too. Nose dies, right. nose dies for days. Is what's probably gonna what's going to happen. That. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, it's um, but majority of the people actually have uh, wear on the, the heel side a lot. Um, I think me and probably one other person I've heard of, uh, we would wear the toe side more. We yeah. lean forward more than I, back. I, and know. I think I was trying to think about it. I really sink into. I I almost call it like like when I'm. I hope you guys can see me right now. When I'm actually going into like a heel side turn, I actually like sit down. Like I sit real deep and I get like really hard onto my heels, and put all of my weight behind me, and I really trust that tire to stay. But for some reason, I don't do that with the toes because I feel like if I wipe out, I'm just gonna face plant. <laughs> gotcha. Well, would you suggest? Yeah, uh, would you suggest something like a tire rotation where you kind of take the wheel off, kind of? I'm terrified, the side? Belly. I don't want to rotate my tire. I don't know Jeff. I'm across the country. I need him. Yeah. No. I just. I. I normally what I do is I nowadays I flip the board around. I ride with a sensor in the back, and I actually kind of like it sometimes. Um, people say I'm crazy, but. They call it riding Mongo, I think, in skating. Right, um, riding yeah. Mongo. Well, no, because it definitely feels different. It uh, it feels a little bit more, like, elevated to me when I do that. Yeah, the nose rides a little bit higher, yeah. which I kind of like, actually. So, 
Um, I haven't had problems, you know. For for doing tricks, like if you're doing bonks and stuff like that, you probably don't want the sensor in the back. But if you're just you know riding, like cruising and carving, it's fine. Have you ridden on a one tail yet, man? No, I haven't. That's something that I definitely want to. Or do you have any kind of a snowboarding background? Because I know that would allow me to widen widen my stance, and I would really prefer that. Yeah, I've tried skating and snowboarding, all that stuff. But you know, I wouldn't say I have a background in that. I've done it here and there, but nothing I'm proficient at. Yeah. Gotcha. Just the one wheel proficiency. Only tires and riding. <laughs> tires and shred, baby. All right, Jeff, we got to get you out of here before we get to Caleb. So is there anything else that we've got for the people before we let you go, my friend? No, man. I love the community. I think it's awesome. And, uh, yeah, if you have any tire questions, I'm more than happy to even jump on a chat, a video chat, and help you guys uh, change your tires if you want to do it. So uh, you can talk to me anytime. Uh, reach out to me. I'm on Grind671 on YouTube, and I'm on the Facebook group all the time. So I'm there for you. That's Grind671 on YouTube. Check out his channel. He's got a whole bunch of stuff out there. He is the original creator of Flight Fins. No, I'm just kidding. Michael and Ori, don't get mad at me. He's got a video out there where he put grip tape on his fender and then used that to get over curbs. And actually, that was something that I was like, wow, that's next level shit right there. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Jeffrey Rosenzweig, thank you for joining us, bud. You did a wonderful job. We really appreciate it, man. All right, man. Have a good one, guys. You got Thank it, buddy. You, sir. Thank you to him. Stay here, you guys. And when we get back, we will have Caleb, who will join us with an uh, just a story that you got to hear. I don't know how this dude rides. I believe he's paralyzed from the knees down, if I am correct about this. And I am just so pumped. He's ready to talk to you guys about how he got into the one wheel. And we'll do that all next. It's Luch Dog in the morning. And this is the voice of one wheel. It's Maddie Mads here. This show is sponsored by TTR Studios. Whether it's weddings, parties, karaoke, audio, video production, and all your entertainment needs, call TTR Studios LLC at 703-850-2223 or check them out at ttrevents.com. Start the show, Looch. Welcome back, folks. It is Looch Dog in the morning. We've got a fun story for you. Caleb joins the show. Caleb, hello, sir. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, sir. I want to make sure I get your last name right. How do we say your last name? Catron. Catron. All right. Caleb Catron, tell me about your story, sir. How did you get into one-wheeling? I, I believe this all started with with skydiving. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it, it did. Like, the injury started with skydiving, but, I mean, I can trail it all the way back to... Um, when I was in the army, I've always been a adrenaline, adrenaline junkie, especially after, after the combat, um, when we were in, over there in Iraq. Well, first of all, so, before anything else, thank you for what you've done. Obviously I think that goes without saying, but we'll just say it one more time. Thanks for your service, man. That's awesome. Thank I, you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so when I got home, there's, there's nothing to do. I mean, I, I needed to find something that would work for me that wasn't illegal essentially. <laughs> Uh, to get that adrenaline rush. And uh, I finally found skydiving and, and started it on that pretty hard. And Caleb, and it, how old are you? 
I'm 35 now. Okay. Right, just just here with me. Me, I'm 34. Belly's 30. We're all kind of right in the same era. So you're skydiving. What happens? So I'm skydiving. I'm getting into it, um, and I get into um, a little over my head on my landing. And what it is essentially is it's it's swooping, and I was basically learning to swoop and uh, made a mistake. So what they call is uh, I hooked in, hit the ground between 60 and 70 miles. Now, hold, an on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What does swooping mean? Uh, it's it's where you make a high speed landing Basic, on, okay, uh, okay. under a parachute. Um, okay. So you're coming you, in you at can, 60 miles an hour. Holy hell. What happens? Yeah. It, it was something like that. It's, it's hard to get the data right, but, uh, <laughs> cause I'm not very smart, <laughs> but obviously that's where I am now. It's because of my poor choices. Oh, but anyway, okay. I hit, I hit the ground and what I do is I crush everything from L five down. L five is what me? Um, I don't know anything about the body. Uh, L five is, is a lumbar in your spine. Oh, it's a vertebrae. So from L5 down, and then I had a compound uh, spinal fracture at the sacrum. Um, so my spine was actually outside my body. At one point, it, it punched a new hole. Okay. Um, Sorry for anybody eating breakfast, but damn, dude, you are a freaking trooper. Like, for real. I mean, how do you get – does that – do you even remember the pain there? Do you remember that? I'm just curious. Yeah. I know we're going to get into one wheeling. Now I have a thousand questions for you. Um, yeah, no, I was awake the whole time. Um, when they called 911, I, I told them, I said, Hey, tell them I'm a 34 year old male. I'm allergic to sulfur. I'm a positive and wow. I need blood. I'm ble I'm bleeding arterially. Holy yeah. hell. Um, when my pelvis broke, I cut the arteries down there and you could feel that anyway. So oh! I knew what was going on. Every man in the audience right now just went, oh! yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. So... And, and listen guys, I already, I, I'm talking very openly with Caleb because this is the kind of dude he is. He's very open about his whole story, and I want you guys to have the details. I'm not prying. We've already discussed this. And he's, to see how far he's come, too. Yeah, because... I mean, you got to have these details to get the real impact of where he is now. So tell us how you got into one. I mean, how long was the recovery there? Uh, so, well, this happened September uh, 26, 2016. Um, structurally, I was allowed to stand December 21st, uh, but I, I had to use a walker because I was paralyzed. Um, and I kind of learned, uh, I, before I should have been done with the walker, I went to a cane and before I was done with, should have been done with the cane. I went to just flopping around like duck feet, um, trying to figure out how to walk. Sure. Um, and then my orthopedic surgeon was so impressed with, with how much I was, I was pushing this, that he recommended the hanger clinic for these exosim devices, which, uh, basically carry your weight on your knees and there's torsion rods that. Uh, are adjusted to your weight and your and your uh, level of activity, and they will actually, when you step down on this carbon fiber device, which encapsulates my foot all the way up to my knees, uh, it it springs a little bit, and then those torsion rods spring back, so you get a little bit of forward momentum. Wow! wow. I've got I've got one of those on each side, and then on the left side, I also wear a knee brace that attaches to that, and that because that knee's been was the worst of the two when they got blown out. So basically, is it safe to say from the knees down? You're, I mean, yeah. right? I mean, that's yeah, what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. basically from the knees down. It's about 80% in the right foot, and it's 100% in the left. From so the, how the hell the, do you ride on a one-wheel, dude? <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I saw one wheel when it was a Kickstarter. I thought it was cool, um, and then I kind of forgot about it until I was sitting in my hospital bed watching YouTube videos, and here it comes again, and now it's a one-wheel plus. Belly, and so I, I started looking into it again. I put about, I don't know, a day of thought in. I thought, I'm going to go find one. Belly, I can't so, imagine this. Like, I, I have to feel like his. this has to be his nightmare. With somebody that's an adrenaline junkie, used to doing all kinds of things, finding a rush, and then being stuck. But his attitude, man. No, the attitude's great, but being stuck in a, in a goddamn hospital bed for how long? Uh, I, was in the, I was in the hospital. Well, I was in a bed from September 26th to December 21st, so. I mean, you're talking months uh, in a bed, and this dude, yeah. like, literally is is an adrenaline junkie like a lot of us are. I can imagine that that ad pop. I'm just picturing, because this isn't a funny story, but it is, it's just fun to talk to you and someone who's just got oh, a mindset that we all could really learn from. Man, I'm just laughing in my head, picturing you in the in the hospital, like, like in the hospital bed, looking at Facebook, and a one-wheel ad comes across, and you're just like, you, like, shoot out of bed, and you're like, I'm better. I'm good. I'm going home. I need this thing. Yeah, it. It was it was months after after that. I mean, I was up and moving, but I thought I need to get better. And at our physical therapy place, they have them stupid boards you stand on that you balance. 
<laughs> yeah. And uh, I couldn't get on it. And I thought, well, these kind of help you balance a bit from my reading. So I went out and I spent the money impulse buy and and uh, fell down a bunch. And now you can ride it? I mean, how did, how has it been? I'm sure the learning curve was a little tough, but how are you uh, on it now? Well, when I first got it, I couldn't even stand on it. I couldn't make the motor engage. I, I just fell, right. and I can't pick up my feet, so my feet are basically stuck to the board, and you just fall forward or back, whichever way it is. Oh, man. Um, so then I got ski poles or trekking poles, and I started using those, and I could make it about five feet at a time, and okay. I did that for days. Um, and then I got down to where I was just dragging the trekking poles, and I was just using them to start and stop. And now I'm up to where I don't use them at all, and, and I kind of ride willy-nilly, and I just started uh, looking for those single track, the mountain bike trails. Man, that is, so that's that's overall so just full-on impressive. I mean, I mean, if anything is dot .pro, that story is dot .pro. That is persistence and just perseverance and just battling it out and saying, I'm going to figure this out, and you Caleb, did, man. did you ever want to quit, man? Did you ever want to say, just, ah, F this? No, because I knew I could do it. I, I snowboarded for 20 years. I knew I could yeah. do it. In my head, I knew what to do. I just had to retrain my body. So I don't balance with my ankles and my toes. I balance at my knees and my hips. So then so maybe that's, you could help us I out. Move the board. Could you could you maybe speak to somebody who's rehabbing right now? I know we've got a lot of injured people in the group. Maybe somebody's watching this as a way to kind of like, you know, just get their fix because they can't get out and ride right now. It's starting to get nice out. Can you just speak to anybody, whether it's a one wheeler or not, just anybody who's in rehab where they know in their mind what to do? But their body, for whatever reason, can't do it. Can you give us just a piece of advice on how to get through something like that? Uh, the, the biggest thing, honestly, is um, that I learned is I didn't realize that I was this stubborn or I was this tough. Your body adapts. Your body will adapt to the tough time. You will find a way. All you need is just a little bit of there's a light at the end of that tunnel. And I can guarantee you every morning when I'm sitting out here at whatever campsite I'm at right now, which is somewhere in Georgia, and I'm drinking my coffee when the sun comes up, Every bit of that pain, that blood loss, the, the, what I did to my family when I hurt them by doing this, but powering through. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did we lose him? It's, it's oh, worth oh. going. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's worth pushing forward, getting yeah. through that dark, and, and getting right back to that sunrise. Man. There's nothing better in the world. That's awesome. Caleb, thank you, man. We really appreciate your story. Keep riding, and we are, of course, sending you $10 for lunch just because why not? And uh, that's what we do here. We like to buy you lunch, put a smile on your face. If anybody deserves it, sir, it is you, and we want to just keep hearing from you. So will you do us a favor? And I would like to get a check-in at least once a month and just let us know how you're doing, what, what new things you're up to. I, I got to keep hearing from you, man. I could talk and to you hopefully forever. Hopefully you can make it down to Float Life Fest uh, down in uh Yeah, North are Carolina. you going to Float Life Fest? Uh, when, uh, I don't know. When is it? It's October 12th, the weekend of October 12th so through the 14th. still ways away. Uh, there, there's a chance. I mean – as of right now, I do whatever I want. So, <laughs> Okay, um, so then can you at least call in at least once a month and give us a sideline report from our senior one-wheel analyst? <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah, if you guys want to chat, I'll chat. It's, you, it's fun. Dude, I'd talk to you every day if I could. All right, man, Caleb, thank you so much, buddy. We appreciate it, and uh, thank you for your time, man. All right, thanks for having me on. Thanks for lunch. Appreciate it, guys. You got All it, right. dude. Caleb Catron, thank you, buddy. There he goes. That's fantastic. So, I mean, I wanted to end today with – with just really strong and if you don't have a smile on your face after listening to that man i don't know what's what's gonna put one on there because that i'm the worst patient i just got the flu belly saw it i'm sitting there mm, mm, just whining on the couch and hearing somebody talk about you know how strong your body is if you really just allow it to be i need those reminders every now and then mm -hmm. i really need them so let's give something away for free. This is our big donator giveaway, and then Belly will leave you with a laugh on your face. Thanks again to Jeffrey Rosenzweig and, of course, Caleb Catrone for joining the show today. This has been a lot of fun. Um, Social Media Lounge, are we good in there? Does anybody have – are they firing uh, I away? Have I haven't one, heard from them. You guys are quiet. I have one question. Uh, hopefully this is kind of just a question you can leave open to the community uh, so that they can kind of figure it out as it goes. But the question was, what about bringing all the tools and stuff at Float Life Fest to have a tire-changing station, maybe even a uh, – Maybe even a tutorial on how to get those tires changed. That um, can happen. We yeah. I, we can make that happen. Justin Thompson, let's make that happen. A tire changing station 
that I think even just if it's inf- informative, not to get your tire changed. Maybe but in a race. I'll tell you what, <laughs> if Jeffrey Rosenzweig wants to make some money, I bet there's a whole bunch of people that would like to bring a tire and a maybe $20 bill to give to him for changing their tire. They'd even offer to pay a pro to change that tire. That's what I'm them. saying. Let's That's get him paid. If he can do it in 15 person. minutes, Jesus, he can make bank. And then uh, from the social media, lo- uh, the Magic Robot. or uh, Magic Robot's call online. For the Magic Robot's call online, nothing on there yet. All right. So from the um, chat, live chat, we've got a lot of people just complimenting uh, our, our last caller, Caleb, just uh, saying, man, this guy needs a documentary. That's I know. Awesome. Netflix. What are you waiting for? Get on this guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. From swooping to shredding. I mean, Jesus. That's too good. All right. So here's what we want to do. Belly's going to do some production work behind the scenes. I will filibuster and tell you what we are giving away. All right. This is from Boulder Denim Jeans. It's a Canadian company, and their owner is a writer. He's called in a couple times, and he wanted to give us something to give away. And so he said, why don't you give away a pair of our jeans? These are like $135 as they retail for. They're Canadian high-end denim um, jeans. They're, and the company is traveling the U.S. on a nationwide sales branding tour out of, some air, out of an Airstream. And so they bought two one wheels to make it easier for the business um, partner and the owner to get around in the cities that aren't best for their travel. And so... About the jeans, they're super stretchy. He, that, that's why he loves the one wheel. He listens. He's a part of the community, and he wanted to give these away and kind of just spread the stoke and say thank you to everybody for being so awesome in this community. So about the jeans, they're super stretchy. They don't lose their shape um, like other jeans tend to. They have the highest stretch retainment in the industry thanks to their patent fabric. So that's pretty cool. They're treated with nanosphere, so it repels liquid, dirt, mud, body oil, so they'll stay clean a whole lot longer, and they'll re- require fewer washes. Lifetime warranty on the stitching. Hidden trap pocket, which is a zipper pocket large enough for a phone or a passport or a hashtag nug plug. I'm just saying. Spe- <laughs> specially formulated waistband to sit on your waist without a belt, even if they're too big, and they are made in Canada in small batches, so support them. Um, we love the uh, the Canadians up there. We're all about them. And let's give those away. So Boulder Denim Jeans. Come on, Belly. That was good. No? Belly's looking at me like, why? Why? Why do you take these chances? All right. So if you go over to the Float Life Fund, anybody who has donated uh, is eligible. Belly's going to go ahead and do that right now. So we'll go over to the Float Life Fund. You can find that if you'd like to donate and you're just listening right now. Um, you can find that at litmradio.com. Just scroll down to the wheel in the middle. And as Belly pulls up all of the donators, he's going to get a random number generator. You guys know how we do these things here. In fact, I want to get a little music. Let's see if I can count today, guys. Yeah, there was like three, three screw ups last time. And it's hard. It's hard to do it on, uh, you know, in real time. It's real hard to count to 31. (laughs) So thank you to the people who are commenting in and letting us know that we blew it. Belly, how many donators are we counting from today? 44. Hopefully it's not 44. You know, well, that would be easy. Please. We could go to the end. I just hope it's not in the middle. Go ahead. What do you got? Random number. Here we go. Oh, jeez. Oh, well, That's 40's great. not bad. 40. 40's not bad. All right. Here we go. The number is 40. He's going to scroll all the way down. Go all the way down. Watching live on air. The tension is palpable. All the way down. I'm going. <laughs> it's a long way down, man. 44, oh. 43, 42, 41. 40. Who's that? Bob Nicholson. Bob Nicholson already won. Who else? Got to do another number. Got to do another number. First time winners only. Bob Nicholson. Congratulations, bud. Two. Two is easy. Two is easy. All the way to the top. <laughs> All the way to the top. <laughs> Back up top. Guess what? It's Bob Nicholson again. Get the hell out of here. Are you kidding me with this? He's going to have to win the pants. No. <laughs> Next one. Bob Nicholson. God bless you. First winners only. 13. 13 from the top. Belly and I are going to sing to you right after this, so don't go anywhere. Here he goes. He's counting. Oh, he's already screwed this up. This is bad. (laughs) Who's the winner? He's like $135 jeans. What was the number again? 13. (laughs) 13. Isn't it? Uh, Yes, it was 13. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, see, I'm already screwing this up, folks. Jesus. I'm going to get so many hate comments for this. And they ruined my day, just so you guys know. I try not to let them, but they ruin my day. Shane Autry. Shane Autry. Belly's going to count one more time while we congratulate you. Shane Autry, congratulations. Has he won before? I don't think so. So congratulations to him. He's getting a pair of jeans. It is Shane Autry. Shane, Shane, hit me up on Facebook. Congratulations, sir, and send me your uh, waist and leg size so that we can get these ordered correctly for you. Again, Boulder Denim Jeans. 
is where you can find these. Check them out. I put these on a promo um, right there for fa- on Facebook to promo the show today. So that's good. Congratulations, Shane. Belly, it's time. It's time. Are you ready? Yep. Let me go back to the main. Because big things are happening here. And I'm kind of excited about it. So, folks, this is what we're doing. We have written a parody song for you. A parody song. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is going to be interesting. This is going to um, be very this interesting. This is going to be horrible. And that's fine. Our whole goal here was to talk about wheels and then put a smile on your face. And so, as I pull up my lyrics here, um, we what we did yesterday, I watched the show The Magicians. I don't know why. For some reason, like, I was sick for, a, like, a week last year and got hooked on it. And now I just watch it. Now I'm, like, balls deep and I'm too far down the rabbit hole. I want to know what happens. And they did a whole, you know how, like, TV shows have, like, that, that one episode where they all sing a song together. Yep. Right? The musical this episode. is ours. This is ours. <laughs> and we're taking it from theirs because Although they, act- they actually like- used Under Pressure yeah. by David Bowie and Queen. Yeah. And they all just sang basically karaoke. They all just sang together. And I was like... Oh, that was really cool. It was kind of a fun episode. And when I went to bed I, that next morning, as I'm halfway waking up, I'm thinking in my head, not under pressure. All I could hear was, oh, uh, no. Tire pressure. I thought of like six better parody <laughs> songs for this, but we stuck with this one. <laughs> so what we would like to do right now. But no, it's going to be great. Is sing for you. Belle, do you have your lyrics up? Yes, I have my lyrics right, up. We have not really practiced this, uh, but this is our version of Queen and David uh, David Bowie's Under Pressure. This is called Check Your Pressure. We really hope you guys like this. Who knows? We're all about screwing around and putting a smile on your face. So have fun. We'll see you guys next week. Be nice in the comments. <laughs> Don't be nice at all. Yeah, crush us if you want. Who cares? Crush us. You got your part. You good? Yeah, I'm ready. Boom, boom, body. Bada, boom, body. Boom, boom, body. Pressure. It's the only thing that I check before I take a float. Tire pressure, like maybe 12 to 15, super bouncy on grass and cars on the streets. Boom ba ba day, boom ba da day. Eat it up, it up. But it's the terror of knowing that it might be too low. It can be cold outside, and I'm screaming, just let me float. So I pump my air to get me higher. Back to 15, and I'm coming on the streets. Floating around, kicking box on the floor. These are the days, but my feet are feeling sore. It's probably too high. Let it down to 15. Cause it's the terror of thinking that you that you know. It's the best thing for you. You'll never go low. Then had time to try. <laughs> and down you to 15. Try it! Drop it down to 15. Keep it easy on the knees. I look down in my hand at my old air pump. Thought to myself, man, what have I done? I thought I knew it all, but now it's time to fly. Insanity laughs come from deep inside. I'm cracking up. I can't believe I've never tried this. I can't believe I've never ridden at less than 26. Why didn't I go low, go low, go low, go? I should have gone lower, way lower, down to 15. Loading is something that I've never felt before. And when you go low with your air, it just feels like you are flying right through the world. You might think 
Sure. 